Welcome to the beautiful city of Athens, the gateway to the Tennessee Valley, a city rooted in deep community relationships and built on a rich tradition of small local business and the very best of the human spirit. As Athens embraces the future, the signs of progress are in full bloom. Join us as we discover the bright spots in this charming southern city that we call home. This is Hometown Heartbeat, Athens. What is going on, everybody? Today is Hometown Heartbeat, uh, episode 31? One? Is that right, Connor? Episode 31? I believe that is right. Episode 31. So what's going on uh, for everyone out there today? It is a Thursday, which is a great day because it's before Friday. Um, for those of you that are in small business, you probably hate Friday like I do, in which case I, I, I mourn for you tomorrow as tomorrow is probably payroll. That is if you were fortunate enough to be deemed essential and stay, um, stay working through this global pandemic. Excuse me while I move my hand sanitizer out of the way. I got to sanitize. I mean, I am solo in the studio today, which is rare. Uh, yesterday, maybe I, um, maybe I, uh, jinx myself or, or kind of put it out there that, that I would indeed uh, do a solo show, and then I got to thinking about it, and I said, you know what, I don't need to do a solo show, um, because every single day, I get in here and I talk to Connor, and Connor is uh, on, uh, he's remotely producing, and, and I've told Connor many times I was going to force him to get on here and join me, um, and today, we have such an honor, and so Connor Higgins, the remote producer, will now join us via Skype, which he is producing himself anyway, so uh connor what's going on buddy uh not much sitting home last day in the uh in the quarantine whoop, whoop. I'm excited. <laughs> just for you buddy just for you um so so connor is a junior now going to be a senior at athens high school am i correct that's the way it works yes the, the burn oh, shut up connor the burning question <laughs> on everybody's mind tell us about what it was like to to be on who wants to be a millionaire god <laughs> All right, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but it was uh, it was a cool experience because I like that. Uh, I really like television production, so I was kind of spending more time ooing and aahing over all the uh, equipment that they were using. It was a, cool to see all that. Uh, it was cool to be on a set. It was cool to do all that stuff. Uh, wish I'd uh, made some better decisions, but uh, other than that. <laughs> so what was the was, turnout? Uh, what was the turnout? The turnout, I walked away with seven grand okay um, that's not bad for a little scholarship fund not like you need it because you're a super genius but um every dollar helps uh julie ann joins us hello dear uh how are you you should you should be joining the show one day julie we i mean you've you've got uh, the matthew pacino foundation which is something that's really awesome uh she sings the she sang the, the national anthem at the red sox game last year at one point so uh right. she goes back a long time in my life and so we need to get her on here to talk about the matthew pacino uh sergeant matthew pacino foundation I won't butcher that story. Maybe I'll uh, call her after the show's over and see if she'll come on and join us so she can tell us. But uh, so, Connor, um, I, I heard a, I heard a quote yesterday from one of my favorite talk radio guys that I've, I've le fallen less and less in love with um, on a daily basis because they, they're, they're getting to be a little one sided in their conversation at times. And, and, and so you take it, take it with a grain of salt, love it or leave it. But I did hear a quote that really caught my attention yesterday. And that quote was along the lines of for all of us to sit here and, and for, you know, Babylon B actually poked fun at it. And they said some, it was a, it was a, a, a headline along the lines of all the millionaires line their yachts up um, and spell out, we're in this together. Uh, and, and so, and so to that end, it's, it's one of yeah. those things where it's like for, for people to say, we're all in the same boat right now, we're in this together. We're all here. Uh, it, it's like somebody in an ocean liner in a big cruise ship, um, in the middle of a storm, looking out at a kayak, getting slammed by the 10 and 20 foot waves and looking at that guy and saying, Hey, w w we're in the same boat. We're, we're in the same storm, yeah. no doubt. Um, uh, but in very different boats. And so it's, uh, you know, I've been here every day um, since the stay-at-home order 
uh, was put into place because we are, as a construction business, which is our core competency, we are indeed official. You, on the other hand, fell under Cotton Row Productions and fell under your mother, and your mother decided, <laughs> and mother and father decided it was in your bed, which is absolutely, um, at the time, was the right way to play it. We had no idea what we were looking at, what we were facing, um, and so we have adhered to the rules, as we've talked about on the show from day one. We've not, we've not advocated to break the rules. We've not advocated to do anything. We have done exactly as we've been asked to do by our fair governor, Mrs. K. Powers. Um, and, and so what has it been like for you? Because you have been home. You've not broken quarantine. Um, you've, you've been for the for the occasional go out and fly a drone, you know, and do some shooting for us or, or, or maybe yeah. swinging by the office on a weekend. Outside of that, you've not broken the rule or the quarantine, whatever. And, and even those two situations, just to be clear, folks, he wasn't breaking the rules. Um, but what has it been like being at home for that amount of time? Uh, not the best, but, uh, but it could be worse. Um, it's been a lot of, I'll tell you something, my sleep schedule has definitely gotten a lot weirder uh, with all this. Uh, so I've kind of oriented myself where the days are shorter because I wake up in the middle of them, you know? So it's like, uh, not as much time spent actually, uh, in the day, but no, it's it's good because I've been able to keep myself busy with uh, some schoolwork. I've had some uh, personal projects I've been working on. I've been, of course, doing this every day, every afternoon, um, and of course, there's a lot of uh, content online that I've been uh, consuming. So uh, for it, those it's been... for those of you that don't know, Connor actually sets his alarm to wake up so that he can produce this show um, at three <laughs> o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. You're not too far off. Um, no, I know that because I, you know, I, there's two people in my life that I don't text in the morning. That's my partner Keith uh, and and Connor. One because uh, Keith needs time to wake up, and you, Connor, because you're not awake. And and so uh, we we found that out on a Saturday. Uh, we had some. Uh, content we were producing for a church and I had crossed my wires with Connor I guess in terms of, of timelines and I was sitting at the office waiting uh, with my motorcycle waiting to pick up a hard drive of finished goods and take it straight to uh, Decatur and um, there were no such goods because Connor was still sleeping. And so, uh, long story short, we got it done and it was it was fantastic. It was a cool project. We were able to take pre-recorded content cut a box, a transparent box out of it, lay that over a live worship service and sync everything together. And it was really neat to do that. Um, Kelly Hudson Lindsay comments, Connor for president. Um, Connor, that, that brings me to my next question that I have here on my notepad. I noticed you didn't put that one on the screen, Connor. I can, if you want me to. Yeah, I'm of just... course I want you to. That's why I mentioned it. I, Connor's yeah, so there modest. Is. is it not there? Connor, so much. Where, where is it, Connor? I don't. It's not working, Connor. I'm, click, I'm clicking. There the it is, there Connor it is. Okay. for president. Uh, I noticed Connor. See, Connor. Connor's Connor's pretty. He's pretty shy. Maybe not. Maybe that's not the word. Uh, just modest. I don't. I don't know. What's how do you describe yourself, Connor? How do I describe? Oh, geez, I'm not good at this. Self well, but stuff. that. But that's. It's this a perfect time to do it right here live with all five of our friends watching. <laughs> um. I get yeah, modest. I guess is a fine word. I just don't take myself too seriously. I feel like that's a what's all that? What's, what's that? Oh, it was me. I was accompanying you as you talked about yourself. Okay, yeah. No, I think uh, I don't take myself too seriously. That's 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 the way to say it. Connor, you you can take the comment down now. I think everybody oh, got the point. Yeah. Sorry, Humble, uh, Kelly. You know what? This is great, Kelly. Why don't you comment um, about what what you think about Connor? Uh, obviously, he's not good at describing himself. Connor, who who is Kelly Hudson Lindsay? Uh, she's a good friend, uh, family friend. Uh, she's been. Uh, I do the poke salad follies. Uh, she's been in those the with what? us. Um, poke salad. Are you familiar with that fundraiser for the uh, senior center group of skits? Oh wow, you really haven't been in Athens long. Um, I mean, five years, but. Yeah, so there's this, uh, yeah, for the past, I think this past year was my sixth or seventh year. What it is, is uh, the Council on Aging, the, every March, they do a, a a play, I guess you would call it. It's a collection of skits with, uh, you know, city bigwigs, the mayor, police chief, fire chief, uh, judges, you name it. Uh, just a little lighthearted group of skits, about an hour and a half show, dinner and a show, and uh, it raises a lot of money for uh, the senior center. I think we and, need to be a part of that this year. When is it? Uh, usually, uh, 
I mean, it practices usually start in January. The show is in March, uh, usually. So it's, so uh, but she's in that with me. And, we uh, seem to have missed the window for that. Looks like COVID-19 is going to take away yet one more fundraiser for people that actually need it. Um, you know, and, and that kind of brings me to, I'm not going to put Connor in the hot seat on what he, you know, his political views or anything like that. He's 17. And it's not time to ruin a man yet. So, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, but, but seriously, uh, you know, what, what is your take? I mean, you're very smart. Connor is, if I could say one thing, I give Connor a hard time because that's my job. I host a show that uh, where we talk about stuff for 40 minutes a day. You have to come up with stuff to talk about. And so I poke, I poke at everybody and it's all lighthearted, but truly, I mean, Truly, Connor is one of the smartest people I know. And typically, in whatever room he's in, he is the smartest guy there. Ooh, Keith is calling me. Let's answer it on the air. Hold on. Oh, jeez. Hey, Keith. Let's see if I can get up a Keith, yes. Keith, you're you're live on the show. What are you What are you doing, buddy? You know, I, as the phone was ringing, I said to myself, I wonder if he's doing a live show. Well, now you're live on it, and I was, you know, it's uh, it, I'm glad you called. Connor's actually in the middle of typing up our on the phone Keith Rowe. Um, so now you'll be a, officially recognized. What have you been up to, buddy? No, I mean, can you hear me? Do I do I sound? You I'm sound you sound illustrious. You sound illustrious. Your your voice I is like a I'm, mix I'm, of Fergie and Jesus. Well, there you go. There you go. I work at it. I do some vocal exercises every morning, <laughs> and um, kind of work into it. You know, I mean, this is a, you don't get the you don't get this naturally. <laughs> that's no, sil that's silky just, smooth uh, tone. No, no. I was. I'm going to start doing some voiceover work. So, what are you doing, buddy? You at there. the you at the chicken house or? No, I had actually just uh, just come home for a minute. I was eating a Hershey bar. Sounds like you're I eating was just something. Calling to, yeah, well, I'm finishing it up. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> but, um, no, actually, I was just calling to check in. So what you got going on the show today? Oh, man, I got Connor on. Uh, so Connor, Connor, our producer, is here live. But today is the last day that he will have to be quarantined. He will be able to rejoin us in the studio tomorrow. And so I've been telling him the whole the whole quarantine that he was going to have to join me via Skype. And uh, turned out today I had no guest. And so today was that day. And so it's it's me and, and Connor, and I just want you to know, Keith, Connor was once on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and actually won money. I, I know he was. I you knew that? I was impressed by that. So I did know that. That's because he's a celebrity. Did he, how far did uh, did he progress in the competition? Connor, how far did you go? Uh, not far, uh, really. <laughs> I, again, it's uh, it was a there's a long story to tell, but I, I, uh, I think it was the sixth or seventh question, and I walked away. With uh, seven now, grand. just just uh, just curious. I mean, what is the process for getting on the show? Hmm. Or what was Long. the process? Long. Uh, it's really? been a while, but there was, to my recollection, you had to fill out a uh, typed application, and then if they liked that, they sent you a longer application to type and fill out. Then, if they liked that, they would connect with you on Skype to do kind of a general knowledge test, see if you were, you know, smart enough to be on the show. If they liked that, they would do an audition where they kind of wanted to see what you were like on camera over Skype as well. Uh, if they like that, then you go into what they call the contestant pool. You just wait for a callback, and then uh, if you get a callback, you fly to Vegas. And or I actually think they moved it now, but it was at Vegas when I filmed. And uh, and then if you're lucky, you get on the show. So basically, you were the total package. I mean, you you had the <laughs> the camera appeal and the intelligence and everything they were looking for. According to beauty and brain for producing a uh, millionaire. <laughs> well, and, and Keith, I just uh, I just made a comment right before you called and I put you on live on the live show with no warning whatsoever. Uh, but right before you called, I, I was making the comment. I was I was actually a very sincere moment where I was complimenting Connor and talking about how, you know, in every room that Connor walks in, he's typically the smartest. And then and then, then he I told me that he and then he <laughs> well, then he told me that uh, he had only he only answered a few questions. Right. And I wanted to go back and say, well, clearly in that room, he was indeed not the smartest person there. Uh, and so my comment, uh, you know, it, did, it definitely depends on the size of the pool you're in. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, that's that's everything, right? I mean, I'm the, you know, I'm I'm the best looking man in my house most days. Um, hopefully, yeah, all days, um, yeah. you know. But uh, I, once, I once thought I could sing and play guitar, and then I went to Nashville for a little while, and I decided it. You're really good sitting on the tailgate of a truck. Yeah, but, well, it's uh, tough uh, out here in these streets. Yeah, you know. Uh, so well, I understand completely. Uh, Keith, I would, uh, I would, I would put you on the spot here. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I, I am going to make you join me here before long uh, via Skype, so that you and I can. I, we we need to be reunited. Uh, uh, you know, at least remotely. It's coming. I think I think Kay Ivy she called me and she said something about she was 
she was about to open things back up in this strict quarantine we've been under. I'm telling you, people are about to riot. Women, if they don't get their hair did shortly, there's going to be some problems. I guarantee you, there's been some heavy lobbying going on. No, if the nail salons and the and the hair and the in the hair did places are not opened up soon, we will have women in the streets. Uh, just just ratchety looking women in the I don't, streets. I just... don't know. I don't know what it is, but I heard something today about a base breaker. I, I think it has something to do with roots. I'm sure all your women listeners out there know about it. If not, ask your hairdresser about a base breaker. You can get you some of that. It'll lessen these roots up and kind of get you going. (laughs) Not only is he our government insider from Montgomery with inside access to Kay Ivey, but also our beauty correspondent, Keith Rowe, joining us this afternoon. I do Um, do what I can. It's multifaceted. Well, Keith is a (laughs) well-rounded, well-rounded athlete, if you will, um, and both in shape and in skills. Um, And so it – oh, oh. Abnormally high heart rate detected. Key started talking about Kay Ivy. My heart rate went up. Um, we we actually renamed her today, Keith. It was K Powers. Oh, I got you. You saw that shirt she wore from the Spy Who Shagged Me. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the little I, ruffles I did, right there I, below. You know, it was either that I or a really, turkey. I abstained from most press conferences, but I didn't see her. But I'm getting a visual. I'm getting a visual of her and Austin Powers kind of doing a little boogie there, back in 65. Well, yesterday when we went live, yesterday, uh, I guess it was yesterday, Connor? With the, no, it was the yeah, yeah, day before that, that we went I live, the, the day, day of the press yeah. conference. And we actually, Keith, we actually had a we had a correspondent there. We had a live look inside. Connor, do you have that? Do you have that? Or you can still access that on the computer? Oh, I don't know. Might, Probably not. Uh, I'll have to um, get in the archive. Yeah, no, nothing, yeah, nothing like putting you on the spot. Well, I do that. I do that all the time. I think it's on the desktop, Connor. But anyways, Keith, we had a live look uh, into Montgomery there. Um, and, and we had a picture of, of Kay Ivey standing next to uh, uh, Austin Powers. And, and it was a who wore it better moment. I, I, I will say that. Um, and and I, I think I think Kay won. I think she pulled it down. The the blue, the bright blue jacket with the roughly turkey neck looking shirt. I'm talking about just I was just just doing it, doing you it. You know, Keith. something something just came to my mind. Y'all may have stumbled onto a new career in meme making. I mean, it sounds like y'all got some skills. Well, uh, I mean, I, I can't take, I can't lay claim to anything. I, I typically just like to pirate my stuff from other other places and act like I created it myself. Hey. I think that's what the internet's for. It's gotten me a long way in life. That's how I got into college. I'm just saying. I'm just kidding, mom. I'm just kidding. No, it was money well spent. Uh, hey, let's not talk about how much money was spent um, because it returned very little, and I had debt to pay for for no degree earned because I was a jack leg. It appears as though he has found it, and folks, uh, if in case you missed it, Bam. Connor, go live ahead, from Montgomery. drop in our live look at the press conference. Oh, my it. goodness. There it is. Oh, we got something else in there, too. Yeah, that's... Uh, we well, Keith, Keith's on the phone, so he can't see it. We're the only people yeah, that do a, I mean, I do, do a podcast. I do enjoy that, it. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm living it through you guys. Oh, I, I was, okay. So I've been wondering, Keith, you're, you're going to like this. I've been, I've been watching Connor pull on his ear for the last like five minutes. And, and I just, I, I was wondering, does his ear itch or like, is he scratching his ear or something? And then I'm like, I wanted to ask him if he was okay or if he had the Rona, maybe he needed to stay home for an extra day. Mm-hmm. You never know. Uh, and, and then I see, I've heard that's a symptom. then I see a comment, Connor tug on your ear to say hello to all of us friend moms watching you. Trisha, he didn't have to tug on his ear. Connor, say hello to those nice people. I mean, give a shout. Hello, everybody. Hello to my fan club. <laughs> Connor does have a uh, fan club. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's more than I have, Connor. You're doing good. I mean, you've been on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. You got a fan club. And Hometown Heartbeat. You are huh. Hometown Heartbeat. Maybe the bigger There's achievement. There's all kind there. of things. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying uh, the, the, the viewership is up today. Trisha Braddock Black, uh, you need to tune in every day at three o'clock. Connor's on the show every single day, either live or, or either either visually or just uh, audibly. But we have we I have, mean, you know, if, if views go up, we can get him on the show. every. Oh, day. no, we've He's already right? done it before the views went up. I've, I've got him. I've got him rigged up with a camera mm-hmm. over in his uh, producing station and a microphone. And so we can go to Connor at any point in time during the show and, and kind of show people the, the, the spaceship command center that he drives from over here. Um, so, mm-hmm. so Connor is, I mean, as if it wasn't already in, in the works, Connor, Trisha Braddock Black has cemented your, your spot on, on a, as a daily contributor to Hometown Heartbeat. Congratulations. How, does it, how do you feel? Uh, we need the applause. Absolutely uh, applause honored. In the background. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. There it is. 
Ah, uh, yes. There um, it is. Thank you, Connor. That's Con- Connor H- Connor Higgins, everyone. All right, Keith, uh, I'm going to let you go, buddy, and um, I will call you back after this, and I promise not to do that to you again, okay? All right, guys. Y'all have a good show. All right. You, you'll talk to you soon, buddy. Uh, that was Keith Rowe, my business partner, best friend, and uh, – and a brother and dad and mentor and all those things all at the same time. He's uh, it's been uh, he has he has a uh, asthma um, and so he has some breathing stuff and so he has stayed uh, really tightly quarantined since this started. Which he's usually I mean we share an office. I mean we have two desks in one office and so it's been awful tough uh, honestly for me without him on a daily basis. And so it, it, I'm excited to get him back uh, at least a few days a week anyway. So, all right, Connor, um, what do you have to say to the people on the way out the door? And then I'm going to talk for a few moments and then we're going to cut her loose early today because if it's Thursday and we've got preparations to make for you to join us tomorrow. So I need to actually clean the studio up, make it look like something before you get here. So um, <laughs> what, what do you want to say as you, as you leave the show today, Connor? Uh, I don't know. Didn't really plan a, uh, a parting shot. Just uh, I'm glad that uh, I'll be uh, returning into the studio and uh, hopefully nobody gets too many ideas with uh, this online education because I don't think that it's all that great. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to let you go out on that comment. Talk to me about that for a minute. What do you mean it's not that great? So, so all right. So though, for those of you that don't know, in Alabama, and as it is across most states, we've taken the education curriculum for the remainder of the year we've put it online and we've said we'll complete the year this way odds are i mean i don't know what i'm hearing is it it may start that way for the first semester of next uh year as well unless the sec has anything to do about it because missouri has already said they're going back on campus in the fall um and so what what what, talk talk to me about specifically what you're talking about there um well the I just don't like the online. Format. I'm not asking uh, you to put anybody on blast by any stretch. What I'm saying is like, what what about, because you are a student, like you are a good student. Mm-hmm. You're a, uh, you're a high achieving. Are you, are you mostly A's? Are you all A's? What, where, where do you, where do you rank? Where do you usually no, get? I'm, I'm, I'm all A's. It's, uh, it's one of those things that it might be partially due to the way that Athens chose, Athens specifically chose to uh, do it. I mean, and I understand why, but it kind of, for somebody who's done well, basically your grade can't go down at all, mm. um, no matter what. It can only go up. And then for every assignment you do, you can teachers can assign a maximum of, of uh, five assignments, I think it was, uh, two points each to your average for each one you complete. Not ace, but like complete. So, uh, we're, so we're in the everybody gets a trophy mentality. C- kind of, yeah. Um, but for somebody, I mean, I've kind of, I was doing well at the, at the beginning so there wasn't a whole lot of space to go up so it's like it's one of those things where it, all that motivation has been removed and in my case i'm working towards uh, i'm taking some ap classes so we're working toward those exams and it has been the hardest thing to get the motivation to actually sit down and do that work knowing that you know i kind of already topped out on what i can what i can do just with the system in place uh so what I'm what test. I'm hearing you say is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but because I, I don't want to misspeak, but 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 it sounds like you are someone who, as we all know, um, anybody that knows you, anyways, know that you are a high achiever, uh, one one of the highest achieving in your grade, and and you work your you work your tail off to achieve that. You take hard classes, you constantly uh, try to achieve challenge, and, and and now with the with the situation the way it is, everyone else who has not yet worked hard, not yet put in the work or or whatever because of what's happened, now all they have to do is complete. 10 assignments and their grade goes up by 20 points. Whereas you no, it's, it's a five assignments for 10 points. 10 is the max five assignments, two points a piece. Gotcha. Okay. So, so they complete five assignments and they go from a 70 to an 80 and 80 to a 90 or a 90 to a hundred, whatever. And you already had a 94, 95 say, and, and so you, you, if you don't complete the assignment, you may, you may go down in grit, but you can't go down. So you don't have to do anything is what you're saying. You yeah, I got gotcha. Everything is technically optional. Optional uh, that, education. Of course, you can't go higher than you know the allocation hmm. for your class, which for most is a hundred. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie; I think I might have liked that when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, because uh, completion is such a um, it's a word with so many. It's very it's very relative, you know. 
Um, yeah, my version of complete and yours are probably two very different, very different expectations. <laughs> so, look, as always, Connor, uh, appreciate you, buddy. Connor's going to hop off and come. Uh, he's not going anywhere um, because he's going to produce the rest of the show. But I, I'm, I'm thankful that you joined us, uh, Connor. It was a good conversation. And like I said, to those of you watching that are in the Connor Higgins fan club, which I'm learning is a real thing, um, Connor will be a everyday contributor uh, on this show for the remainder of – the summer and into the school year depending on when how how the class thing shakes out he'll still be here every day hopefully and and still be able to join us so for the foreseeable future until he goes off to greater pastures and in, in college he will be a part of our our show every day so connor thank you um for joining us and thank you for what you do for us every day we would not be able to do this without you and we greatly appreciate you so as absolutely good to be here absolutely man thank you as connor is uh as connor is moving into production mode uh, i'm just going to address a couple of things briefly um that that i um i don't know that i feel are kind of important and it goes back to what i said earlier about uh about the same same storm different boats right if if you've been impacted by this disease by this pandemic um I can understand how if your business was shut down, if your business was closed, if you didn't get the assistance you were promised, if if fill in the blank, you fill in the blank. If that happened to you, I could understand how it would greatly uh, it would greatly frustrate you to hear from from us that we're all in the same boat. We're all here in this together because the reality is we're not. Um, there are salon owners, uh, professional hair care uh, people. There are nail stylists, nail uh, salons that are wondering why. The government is now choosing who wins and loses in business. And and to be honest with you, it's a question that I, I feel um, I feel awful about and, and personally don't know where it fits in how I view this country, our liberties and our response to these things. And so as a Christian, I, I, I value all human life. That's all human life across the board, the, the life of the refugee, the life of, uh, of the immigrant, the life of the American, the life of the COVID um, sick and the COVID uh, suppressed and the whatever, you fill in the blank. And, and so right now it's, it's odd for us uh, to walk down this, this road where the government is arbitrarily saying, okay, this Lowe's, you can run wide open, but nail salons, you can't. And, and what I would love to see and where I've landed on all this is having, having a place where the, the individual has the right to choose and common sense is allowed to work. Look, if nail salons open tomorrow, like everything else, do we one trust that the nail salon owner would be able to come up with the, the measures that it would take to keep everyone safe? Well, if, if we trust the restaurant owner or the retail owner, then certainly we would trust the nail salon owner, right? So, so that's one part of it. The second part of it is as a market in capitalism, capitalism is the greatest system on the face of the planet. And, and as such, the market is allowed to choose. Not only does, not only does the, the, the business have to find the way to reopen wisely, smartly, and responsibly, but also we have to figure out how as a business, as an entrepreneur, how to re-educate and reaffirm to the marketplace that our business is safe and secure. And, and that is, again, leaving civil liberty, personal freedom to the person, to, to the, the common sense, if you will, of the American who, who, who is in, endowed certain unin, unenalienable rights, right? And so at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those things where right now we are, we are at the precipice of what I think is, is a humongous mountainous decision or, or time frame in our nation's history. And, and as such, I find myself as a Christian falling on my knees in prayer that, that, that the government would be filled with folks who are seeking God's wisdom in the decisions that they make on a daily basis, um, but, but also that, that this would not reshape an America for my son, my Zayden, my four-year-old, that, that he's going to grow up in a place where where I'm going to have a hard time recognizing what he calls America one day and I know that that's a stretch to a lot of you and I know that you're like man this guy's crazy this guy's one of those one of those guys and the reality is I don't think you understand what started and, and what was the very genesis of this country what what created the the actions that led to the tea party what created the 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 harbor in Boston being filled with tea. Um, and, and if you if you do understand history and you do know those things, then you have to you have to agree with me in that we are we are at the point right now of of colossal decisions uh, being made for us without our say. 
Um, the federal government does not have the authority to tell a church they cannot meet. So right now, the only reason churches aren't meeting is because they're being nice, because they care about the, the common man. They care about their people. They care about all lives. If, if the church wanted to meet tomorrow, there's no government that could stop that. That is the Constitution. And so at the end of the day, I just hope that as we as we conclude and, and draw to the end of this thing, we we start to do so with some common sense um, and, and with some some civil liberties being returned, which we all know won't happen because when the government takes them, they usually don't give them back. This is not a government podcast. This is a podcast about our hometown, your hometown, hometowns all across America. And the reason it all matters is because up to 47% of small businesses will not open after this is over. I've said that a hundred times in the last 31 episodes, and I'll say it a hundred more times over the next 31. There's 47%. That percentage of the, what, 40-some percent of the country that's made up by small businesses, that's what represents a lot of your 21, 22, 23 million of unemployment, okay? And so those numbers so so deeply are connected and coordinate. That's what all this is about. This is not about the government. This is not about any of that. This is about you and me and the neighbor John and Joe and whoever that owns the hot dog stand on, stand on the corner of second and, and whatever. That's what this is about. This is about your town and my town and, and our town as people coming together, drawing near to one another, making our voice heard for change and remembering what's happened over the last six weeks. When it's time for the next local election, Maybe you'll, for the first time, get involved in local politics because you're learning right now, maybe for the first time in your life, it's the only politics that matter. And so at the end of the day, guys, uh, you know that I love you. You know that I love sitting up here every day talking to you. You know that I'm tired of talking about the coronavirus. So hopefully this will be over soon and we will have some more. It's, it's hard to report on public interest stories when nobody's going out in public. So as for now, you know that uh, you know that I love you. You know that I'm here. You know, if you need me, uh, you can find me at, at 256 by cell or Zach at cottonrow.com. In the meantime, uh, I will see you guys tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Meet me here. Connor, take it away. Love you guys.